ASMR Sports here. Um, it has been a good while since I've recorded a video, and it's been um, a while since uh, anything's been posted on my channel. Although, I did record one video like a week ago, and um, I've not posted it yet, so you'll see that before this one, but...
basically opening modern cards is kind of like playing the lottery you know to a sort of a limited extent you could get a card that's worth quite a bit it's very hot and you can sell for you know a good amount of money uh, older cards you just don't have that so it's less interesting uh, or at least it's less like gambling which is very addictive um so in any event all right so i bought a bunch of unopened stuff um online from a guy um and uh in it were a bunch of rack packs um a lot of them were uh, this product which is 1990 fleer football this was the premier edition so the first year that fleer had done player football cards um interestingly fleer has been had been producing nfl cards that showed like um like they'd have a, a, a action shot of you know a game showing many different players but they didn't really like you know make cards of individual players so um we had made you know nfl licensed cards but not of individual players i think um i kind of wonder if that meant they had like a you know a league license but not a players association license um so in any event, Flair sort of made football cards before, but not, you know, in the sense that we think of them, you know, with individual players, until 1990, when, you know, a lot of stuff was coming out. This was, the, like, the height of the sports card market was 90 through, like, 92. Um, there were, in every sport, new brands coming out, and, you know, existing brands were sports. This is the case with the Fleer, um, which had historically done like basketball since 1986 and baseball since 1981. So they got into football um, at this time. All right, and this was the premiere set. I, I sort of love it when uh, I get rack packs that have like the <laughs> original price tags and um, all these have the same kind of price tag, but within the lot of packs that I got, there were actually a few different ones. There was like some that had a Walgreens sticker. I don't know what this is. Um, this is just maybe some random kind of variety store, but you can kind of see, you know, how things were priced back in the day. The original price was a buck ninety-nine. Uh, for this pack, the rack pack, which is like three wax packs, um, it got down, marked down to a buck thirty-nine. These days, you'd probably be lucky if you could sell this whole thing for like a quarter, um, because this stuff was just so mass-produced. Because, um, use the scissors here, you know, because there was such interest in sports card collecting at that time. And, you know, so many people were getting into it, basically not because they were super interested in sports, but because they felt like it was a good investment. You know, they were just kind of buying anything and everything, and the manufacturers knew this, so they would uh, really run up the printing presses on new products like this, and they probably sold a lot of them, but... Yeah. 
which is, by the way, a small portion of what I have available. There's Blair Thomas, he was okay. There's a kind of a cool Montana and Rice card.
Sports kind of documentary show that um, ESPN did and they put online um, that you can watch on the Bills from that era. Michael Irvin, second year card. Very nice. 